Lord Jesus, we thank you. I want us to sing this song as it comes unto us. I want this song to minister to us this morning. I want us just to give ourselves to God this morning. We have got needs. Trevor, you have got needs. Jose, you have got needs. Paul, you have got needs. I want us to sing this song. It is a song that must lead us before God. And those who are tuning us, us I can see Betty is online right now. I can see Gabriel from Mombasa is online. There are people that are connecting with us. Wherever you are connecting from, I want you to connect with us that this song, as we sing together, this song is bringing our sacrifice before God. Whatever you have, whatever pain, whatever struggle that you are dealing with, today I just want us to give it unto the Lord. Let's surrender our pain unto the Lord. Everything, whatever the enemy wants to make you feel, it is impossible. Let's give it unto the Lord. Let's give it unto God. In the name of Jesus. Sing unto your name and to your 
Sacrifice, we pray that your God control everything that concerns us in the name of Jesus. We give ourselves unto you, Rabo Santa Boko Talabo Sita Labos, Rebele Santa Bosica Labacaya, Rati Bosente, Gato Colobo Sita Labos, Rebele Santo Boko Tolobos, Rita Bayanolo Sica Labosaya, Mati.
my sacrifice. Let's all do it again. And to your name. My sacrifice once again and to your name I will give my sacrifice. Hallelujah, glory to God. If ever do have something, praise the Lord. Let's have our seat and sit in the presence of God. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you in our morning service, wherever you are connecting us from. Uh, I want us to agree on the rules of engagement this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate all of you that are connected. I've already appreciated a few of them. I can see my bishop from South Africa, Bishop Joe Tauzi is online. I can see Charles Muli is online. I can see Beatrice Oiko is online. Wherever you are watching us from, we want to appreciate all of you. Uh, I can see I can see many people. I can see Bishop uh, Chris Chris Joseph being yes, being the beloved son. Okay, Joseph, what did we learn? At, at least your brothers already overtaken you. But just tell us, what did you learn on Sunday? About jealousy. About jealousy. And we say that we must avoid jealousy if we want to be effective dreamers. So, my dear listeners and dear viewers, wherever you are connecting us from, I want, I want to ask you to do us one thing. That wherever you are, if there is something that is making... A meaning if there is something that is making an impact to you you can type it you can just type it on that uh, on that uh, on that we can see Azusa is online also we appreciate her so much and uh, we want to ask you that whatever you are going to learn today the scriptures that you are going to quote today the points that you're going to put them to, down today the best thing that you can be able to make this session or this service to be interactive is just type it whatever that is making sense or whatever god is giving you a revelation over as we are learning i kindly ask you to type it because that is the only way that we can be able to encourage each other the same way we do in church give your neighbor a high five we are going to give each other a high five by you typing somebody say amen, amen. and my church in the house today i want to encourage you to support me. If I say something that has got a meaning, or if I say amen, you just shout amen. Praise God. Amen. Ah, praise God. Amen. Ayo amen in itakatifu sana. Praise God. Amen. Yes, that way. You just say amen, and uh, the service is going to be very much enjoyable. We are reading from the book of Genesis, chapter number 37, and the message for today, we are still on the subject about the dreamers, the dreamers, everybody say the dreamers, the dreamers. shout again, I am, a I am a dreamer, shout again, I am a dreamer. I am a dreamer, now one of the things that I want to start by saying is this, you cannot kill a dreamer, and you cannot kill a dream, when God gives a dream, he puts a dream in a person, and that person, instead of being just himself, or with the name that they were born with, that person automatically becomes a dreamer. And that is why, the reason why Joseph was loved and Joseph had the favor that he had all the years, it is because there was something that defined Joseph. It is your dream that defines who you are. A man or a woman that do not have a dream, it is impossible for people to define you. So everybody of us here, you carry a dream. And I want you to know that that dream that you carry, nothing can kill it and nobody can kill you before the dream becomes a reality. Can you say amen? amen? So we are getting into Genesis chapter 37. The Bible says, now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, 
This is the history of Jacob, Joseph. And last Sunday I told you that the reason why the Bible definitely begins with Joseph to describe the to describe the history of Jacob. It might be that all the sons of Jacob in the beginning were not a blessing to him at all. We look unto that and we find that the firstborn by the name Reuben, he had defiled his bed. We look another one called Levi, they went and fought and they brought trouble into the house of Jacob. So when we look unto these children that were born unto jo Joseph, Jacob, they were troublemakers. Most of them, they had a lot of issues and even their sister Dina, the Bible says that she went to play with, with strangers and they raped her. And the sons of Jacob, they became angry and they decided to revenge. And by revenging, the thing made Joseph, Jacob to become angry. But when we look unto Joseph, there is nowhere Joseph was found in a scandal. There was nowhere Joseph was a troublemaker. There was nowhere that Joseph was on the bad side of the history of his father. Maybe that is why the Bible, when it speaks about the history of Jacob, it begins with Joseph. Because he was the son that was born unto him at the old age. But at the same time, he was a son that gave him peace. Sometimes it is possible to have many children. But if you have got one out of the 90, or if you have got one out of the 100, or if you have got one out of 12, that makes your troubles to become less. That one becomes the pride of your life. Every mother or every father, they want to have the pride of their children. And that is why the Bible says that a child that is bad is a burden to the mother. But a child that is pride is wise or the child that is bright is the wisdom, is the pride of the father. So Joseph might be, he was the pride of the father because he never engaged himself into things that were not, that, into things that did not make the father be happy, unhappy. Somebody say, and that's what the Bible says that this is the history of Joseph. Being 17 years old, was tending the flock with his brothers. And he lay, the Lord was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wife. And Joseph brought a bad report about his brothers. So in other words, that Joseph, he was a man that was distinct, distinctive. He did not accept to be common, but he was uncommon among his common brothers. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you need to understand that when you accept to become uncommon or when you accept to become unique, the people that are always common, they will always raise against you. You cannot raise up your standard and expect common people to treat you, uh, to treat you in a common way. Anytime you raise up a standard, anytime you decide that you are not going to engage yourself into certain behaviors, certain characters, certain things, the people that you are coming from, they will always fight against you. Sometimes you have seen people say that you are proud. Some they will say that these days you have changed a lot. Some they will say that these days you don't want to work with us. Some they will tell you that these days you don't want to relate with us. Some they will tell you that you don't want to hang out with us. The reason is the dream that you carry is the one that will always separate between the wheat and the chaff. Somebody say amen. amen. When you accept to become a wheat, we cannot work together with the chaff. And that is why Joseph, the Bible says, despite of the fact that the brothers engage themselves into uncommonly behaviors, the Bible says that he could take a bad report about them to his father. No wonder that is why they hated him, because they knew that everything they're going to do in the presence of Joseph, Joseph was going to report them. You need to understand that when you are a truth, when you are a truthful person, and truthful person will hurt you. Praise God! Somebody say, "I'm a truthful person." Say again, I'm a, "I'm a truthful person." When you decide to walk in truth, the untruthful will not love you. The Bible says that you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It is the truth that you know. That determines the freedom that you 
her. Oh, hallelujah. It is the truth that you know that determines the freedom that you have. If somebody does, if somebody doesn't have the truth, this person is under bondage. But the moment you walk in the truth, the truth becomes part of your freedom. And that is why the Bible says, Joseph brought a bad report about his brethren. The Bible says in verse number three, now Joseph, now Israel loved Joseph more. The Bible does not say Jacob. Somebody say Israel. Israel. I'm showing you something. Somebody say Israel. Israel. There is a difference between Israel and Jacob. Jacob is a local name. Jacob is a name that was given from his mother's house. Jacob is a name that defines a local grace. Jacob is a name that defines that this one is just a village person. But the moment you become Israel, that one defines that you have skipped from being local into an international. So Israel loved Joseph more than his brethren, which means that Israel, the whole nation that God had favored, also that nation loved Joseph. Somebody say amen. amen. And remember this one. God is speaking it unto Joseph, the Bible says in verse number five, now Joseph had a dream. Somebody say, I have a dream. I have a dream. Shout again, I have, a dream. I have a dream. Now Joseph had a dream. Now Joseph have a, had a dream. The reason why Israel loved Joseph is because he had a dream. But in order for your dream to become a reality, there are steps and things that you must be able to do so that that dream can, can become a reality. You cannot connect to the top of your dream until there are steps that you have to follow. And the steps that I'm going to share with you today, these are the steps that Joseph followed and the dream became a reality. Somebody say amen. Now, the Bible says that Joseph brought a bad report about his brothers. So, step number one for you to realize your dream, you have to be the best. You have to be the best. Somebody say the best. The best. The best. God has not called you to be average. You have not been called to be average. You have to put effort. Whether it be in school, whether it be in rugby, whether it be in football, whether it be in preaching, anything that God has given you, you must work it out so that you can improve it to become the best. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you tolerate mediocrity, mediocrity will kill you prematurely. But if you encourage excellency, excellency will put you to the top. And that is why you have to strive to become the best. Don't be among the worst, but try to be among the best. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When we look unto the place of the worst, the worst are too many. The worst are too many. Bad people are too many, but best people are few. Praise God. Amen. When you look into the, the valley of the valley of dry bones, we will see many bones that are scattered. Ezekiel, when he looked down, he saw a valley of dry bones. But when we go to the mountain, he was the only one that was standing. You cannot stand on the mountain until you accept to come out of the valley. Praise God. For you to become the best, for you to become the best among the rest, you have to be willing to raise up a standard and be excellent in whatever you do. And that is why to see the favor of God in your life, you must be the best. The Bible says, God said, I have found David a man after my own heart. What was David doing? David was excellent in whatever he was doing. Even when they brought him before Saul, they said that this man is skillful in playing the harp. Praise God. His wise, the man had a level of excellence to an extent whereby when he plays the music, the sheep could listen to him. When he plays the music, the bears could be confused in the, in the forest. When he plays the music, the lions could be confused. If David was able to play a music, 
that a single sheep could understand him. How much more should we be able to play our music for the human beings to listen to us? You must be the best in what you are good at. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Say I will be the best, I will be the best. In, what I'm at. in what I'm good at. Somebody say I will be the best, be the best. In, what in what I'm good at. You need to understand you are the only one who knows what you are good at. Nobody will tell you what you are good at. Some people, they start like comedians. And when they start like comedians, their parents will not understand them. <laughs> Praise God. Your parents will want you to be a doctor. But what you are good at is being a comedian. Praise God. So along the line, people will be fighting you. Because they will be asking, why did you choose to be a comedian? And when we look at you, you are supposed to be a doctor. But because you know that is the area that you are connected, you put all your effort into it, then one day later, you prove them wrong. Praise God. Amen. It is only by working what you are good at, you will be able to prove your critics wrong. People will discourage you. People will say all manner of things. But if you work it without giving up, if you work it without being discouraged, if you work it without listening to the external voices, that which you are good at, and you do it at the best effort that you have, it is the one that is going to speak for you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So excellence is our heritage. Mediocrity is a, is, 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 is a, a misrepresentation of God or divine nature. Anytime you encourage mediocrity, you are misrepresenting God. Mediocrity the way you put on. Mediocrity the way you walk. Mediocrity the way you talk. Mediocrity even in the place where you stay. That is why if God has given you something small, make it become admirable so that you can be given the bigger one. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Excellence is the nature of God. If you want to get to the top, you must be the best. Somebody say, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best. Shout again, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best. You have to be willing to be the best at what you are good at. Tell your neighbor, be the best, be the best. at what you are good at. Say again, be the best at what you are good at. When I was still in school, Joseph, I used to be in drama. I used to be a doctor. And whenever we could go for the festival, when it comes to drama in the area of a doctor, my character used to be doctor. When I could, nikishika sidani nikidunga mutu na mutunga nikama ni ukweli, mbaka aliye, ndiyo ni muachilie. And the invigilators could look up to us and they could clap and they could give a recommendation. At the end of the drama festival, they would give me a certificate. Praise God. Because they say that this one in this kit, he was the best actor. Literally, did I not know that I'll become a doctor by being a pastor. Be what you are good at without without being intimidated. Be what you are good at without somebody trying to bring you down. Somebody say amen. amen. In Job chapter 10, the Bible says, therefore, of understanding, far be it from God to do wickedness and from the Almighty to commit iniquity. For he repays man according to his work. And makes man to be found reward according to his ways. Surely God will never do wickedly, nor the Almighty pervert justice. Somebody say Amen. So if you do what is best, God will always reward you according to the best of what you can do. You don't expect salary increment and you are not performing. You don't expect to be promoted and you don't know you are not doing your work well. You don't expect your boss to favor you at the place of work and you come to job late. Anything that you do at the best, even if man does not reward you, the Bible says that God does not pervert justice. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. It is by doing it at the best of your effort that God will cause it to happen. Even if you do it unto people and they don't recognize what you are doing, God 
has got a way to reward you. Somebody say amen. amen. And that is why if you want God to put favor on you, please make it easy for him by producing excellence in whatever you do and your story will change. So you have to be the best. Somebody say, I'll be the best. I will be the best. Shout again, I'll be the best. I will be the best. Number two, you must understand times. Yeah. You must understand the times. Not all times are the same. If God today gave you food, remember, there will be time there will be no food. So what do you do in times that you have got food? Praise God. Amen. If God gives you money today, Remember, there will be time you'll have no money. What do you do when you have got money? If God gives you good friends today, there will come a time those friends are going to change. So what do you do when you have got no good friends? The best thing to do in your times, you have to understand to invest. Invest in relationships. Invest in your finances. Invest by saving food. You must learn to save. Most people, they don't save. They don't save friendship. They don't save food. They don't save money. They eat because they know tomorrow it will do what? It will come. Seasons and times are changed. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Where we were 20 years, it is not where we are today. Yeah. There are a lot of things that have changed in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you understand the times, you will end up as a commander in your generation. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter number 23, the Bible says that and Isaac sowed in that land, Isaac, Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped a hundred times. He understood the season that he was in and he was able to sow without having it says that and Isaac sowed in that land in, in Genesis chapter 30, 26 verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. He understood the seasons. He understood the times and he was able to sow. When everybody was folding their hands because it was dry, because the land was dry, because it was a season of drought, Isaac took the opportunity to sow. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you need to understand that not all times it is to sow. No, not all times it is to harvest. Yeah. There are times that you need to sow. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Sow. Sow into grace. Sow into a man of God. Sow into the life of a pastor. Sow into the life of a man of God. Because God says that whatever a man sows... That is what they are going to reap. So you must be able to sow. Know the seasons. Know the seasons. Jesus knew the seasons. And that is why even David knew the seasons. Esther, they understood the season. They knew the seasons. And that is why when they knew the seasons, they the season. Praise God. And that is why Esau was a man who did not know the season. And he did not use it well. But we must be able to know the season. Somebody say, God help me. God help me. To, understand to understand your season, season. and your time. Mm -hmm. Say it louder. God, God. Help, me help me to understand, understand. your season, season and your time. Mm -hmm. Number three, you must develop yourself. You must develop yourself. You cannot be a boxer and you want to go into the ring. And what you do, you sleep 24 hours. Praise God. Sometimes I watch wrestling with Joseph and I always ask him, well, is those things real? But what does he tell me? He normally tells me that it is their training that makes them to do what they are doing. Praise God. You, they develop their muscles. They develop their skin. They develop their everything about them. Even if somebody comes up with a ladder and beats them 
or picks them up and drops them down. They cannot break. But let somebody do to you the same thing they do unto them. You will die even before you arrive on the ground. Praise God. Just in your life. Listen to this one. Even when something comes, you do not consider suicide as an option. Praise the Lord. Suicide does not solve anybody's problem. Suicide is only for those in their faith. But when you have developed yourself in your faith, when something comes to pressure, you see it beyond. You say, ah, ah, even this one is going to come to pass. In my life, I've gone through a lot of things that I, should, I could have committed suicide. <laughs> I've gone through beatings. I've slept in trenches. I've gone in places whereby I, I remember one time I was going to Congo. And when I arrived at the border of Congo, they took away my bag. The soldiers, they arrested me. All of them, they were with the guns. They took me somewhere near a river. And they wanted to shoot me. So I told them, me, I am a Kenyan. I only came to this country to preach. And I've been told that once I cross this border, I'm going to a place that is called Uvira. If I had no faith, I was going to come back. Praise the Lord. But I told them that I've been sent here with the gospel. So they said, what you're going to do because there's no transport that is allowed between the border of Burundi and Congo. They got me a pro box. This pro box was carrying over 12 pressed in between my bags. What they get, they gave me back my bag, and it was put on the it was put it was put on the on the on the on the, on the top of the of, of, of the pro box. I they drove with me for over 70 kilometers. That is when I got my host on the other side. Still, the journey is not yet over. The place that I was to sleep, I was taken in a small room near the, the lake. That night, it rained so heavily. In the morning, when I woke up from that shack that was near the, the, the lake, all the shanties of that place, including the one that was next to me, the storm had destroyed. When we went to this pastor church, the storm had destroyed the church. I'm still waiting for one week so that I can cross from Uri Uvira to Kalemi. I still waited. When the day arrived, I picked up the ship. Was on water for two days, night and day, storms, until I arrived where I was going. I preached there for seven days. I returned. If you do not have a strong shock absorbers, there are things that you will give up very quickly. Praise God. People that cannot go an extra mile cannot be able to break through in anything. Be a person that is willing to move. Don't be a person that waits things to come your way. Be a person, if they don't come, go after them. Praise God. Amen. A breakthrough requires a breakdown. I just said something powerful. A breakthrough requires a breakdown. You cannot break through into what you don't break down. Hallelujah. There are some walls of resistance. There are some walls of discouragement. There are some walls that try to pull you down. You must break them down. And you can only do that when you develop yourself. Somebody say develop yourself. And that is why your information level determines the rate of your promotion. And your revelation determines your elevation. It is what you know that puts you, that puts you into the know-how. Seek not to be known, but determine to know instead. And what you know will make you know. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout again amen. amen. What you know will make you known. People are not known by what they don't know. You need to reach a place whereby when people invite you, they know what you are coming to say. They don't have to guess. Because instead of having a message, you have become a message. Praise the Lord. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who are of reputation, lest by any means 
I might run or had run in vain. Praise God. He went up by revelation. You have to know. Anyone that is on the same spiritual plane for two consecutive years or for two consecutive days has backslidden. That is Winko Smith that said those words. You are known for what you know. You must be able to know something. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why when David went before God, when he went before the crowd, he said what he know. Your servant has been taking care of the sheep. And the bear came and I destroyed it. The lion came and destroyed it. The same God who delivered me. He believed in himself because he has been there. You should be determined to know irrelevant things. And these are the three areas that you must be able to know. Number one, you must know God. Praise God. Amen. Number two, the knowledge of your career. What about us here? The knowledge of your heart. Of your career. I cannot decide for you that you become a nurse when you know your career is to become a what? A doctor. Or your career is to become a secretary. Or your career. You must know the knowledge of your career. That which your heart is connected to. That is what you must allow your heart to collect. Number three, you must have the knowledge of your destiny. The knowledge of your destiny. You must know the knowledge of your destiny. Somebody say the knowledge of my destiny. Shout again the knowledge of my destiny. In Jeremiah chapter 51 verse number 17, the Bible says, my Bible is not analog. It says, everyone is dark, hearted, without knowledge. Every Metal smith is put to shame by the carved image. When you have got no knowledge, you become dull. Your mind becomes dull. So you must have the knowledge of your destiny. And that is why the food of your mind is knowledge. And the food for your spirit is revelation, which is the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse number 4. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. So the first thing we said, you must be the best. Somebody say, I must be the best. I must be the best. Somebody say, I must be the best. I must be the best. Number two, you have to understand the times. Then number three, you have to develop yourself. Number four, refuse to be distracted. Refuse to be distracted. Not every party is your party. Not every visiting is your visiting. Yesterday when I was preaching in the evening, I said, there comes a time that you must be yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Buenas Amen. You must know when you are in a place, how many minutes should you take there? How many minutes should you, what time should you be able to leave? And you must teach your mouth and your heart to say, I am living. Praise God. Amen. A man that does not make decisions cannot be able to make a decision for anybody. And that's why you need a laser beam focus and you need the tenacity to fulfill your destiny. Never waste your time of your life responding to people who are going nowhere. Don't let criticisms distract you. If you look unto the leaders, especially the presidents, there are people they don't answer. They cannot come to answer the critics from the MCA or the members of parliament or some some or some uh, some uh, some, uh, some, uh, some governors or some uh, some uh, some, uh, some, uh, some senators. They can't because they are not of their level. So what do they do? They will look their age mates, they will look their level mate, so that they be the ones that are responding to them in the media. Praise the Lord. So don't waste your time responding to people who are going nowhere. Nehemiah, when he decided to build the, the wall, in, in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 12, Nehemiah did not accept destruction. Praise God. One as first he did not accept 
destruction. He went to the wall, picked up the spear, and with a few people that Nehemiah had, and he started building the, the wall without anybody. Remember there were some ballots. In your lives and ballots will be there. Remember there were Tobias. Tobias are going to be there. Somebody say amen. amen. Distractors. People that will come to discourage you. People that will come to tell you what are you doing. But all you need so that you can be able to accomplish that which you have started. You need to stay focused. If you can't be focused without refusing destruction, you cannot accomplish that which you have started. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse number 12. The Bible says, Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobias and Sanballat he had hired him. Oh, I like this one. So there is a possibility that people can come in the name of God to discourage you concerning the decision and the direction that you are about to make. But you must never accept distractors to distract you. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says that he perceived not every prophecy is from God. There are people that are going to be sent in your life. There are people that are going to talk nice things. And some of them, those things they are going to tell you, they will make you look, they will make somebody to look bad in your life. Let's say, for example, somebody has worked with you all years. How do I know by a mutu? You have never seen the bad side of the person. You have never quarreled. But somebody will come to tell you, hey, Paul, you need to be very careful. That guy, that guy is not a good guy. Me, I know him very well. You must perceive. Somebody say, I must perceive. I must. Somebody say, I must perceive. I must. You must perceive. The Bible says, then I perceive that God has not sent it. Not every good advice is a right advice. Did I say something there? <laughs> Not every good advice is a right sure. advice. Yeah. If somebody tells you this guy, you don't just speak it and say this guy you need to take time. Listen to your spirit. Go through the experience and the lessons you have learned together. Go through your work with him. Go through some of the things you have done together. Find out is there any reason that can make me drop this guy. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anything that can make me become angry? Is there anything that can make me not walk with him again? Is there anything that can make me disconnect? Or is it jealousy that is being provoked here? Because the Tobias and Sanballat, it is jealousy that provoked them to instigate Nehemiah from building the wall. Praise God. Amen. Can I say this one before I close? You must know the voice of Tobias and ne You must know the voice of Tobias and Sanballat in some people's statements. Can I say it again? Yeah. You must know the voice of Tobias and St. Bernard in some people's statements. And the only way to detect the voice of St. Bernard and Tobias is when you can perceive. The Bible says that, and I perceive, Nehemiah 6 verse number 12, then I perceive that God has not sent him at all. But he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobias and Sanballat had hired him. There are people that will be hired. There are people that will take coffee. There are people that will be given money. There are people that will be given some, some goodies so that they can bring you a prophecy to bring you down. But you must perceive the voice of Sanballat and the voice of Tobias in those that are sent in your camp. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Don't let anything distract you. Never waste your time on people who are going somewhere, nowhere. Distraction is the enemy of distinction that leads to destruction. Refuse the influence of the Sanballat and Tobias and their counterparts. Anything that is not your intention should not command your attention. So avoid distraction. Praise God. Amen. If something is not part of your intention, don't let it take away your attention. Praise God. We find that a divided focus equals to divided energy. And divided energy equals to divided destiny. Your focus determines the speed with which you run your life and assignment. Your focus determines your fire. Jesus gave only three and a half years of, of, of focus. And this world has not yet recovered from that. Praise God. The world has not recovered. Nehemiah had only 52 days focus and the wall of Jericho, no, the wall that was destroyed, the wall of Jerusalem was built in 52 days. And that is why you must focus. Three things I want to complete by saying, refuse to be distracted. Somebody say, I refuse to be distracted. I refuse to be distracted. Shout again, I refuse to be distracted. I refuse to be distracted. Say again, I refuse to be distracted. Number two, refuse to be destroyed. Say, I refuse to be destroyed. Say again, I refuse to be destroyed. Then number three, refuse to be stagnant. I refuse to stagnate. Say it again. So the Bible says that then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but he pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Today I decree any voice of Sanballat and Tobias that is speaking through a brother that has been hired, that is speaking through a sister that has been hired to, to discourage you, may that, voice be, may that voice be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Number, three, number, number five, as I'm going to close, is you must maintain a prayer life. You must maintain a prayer life. You must pray. Be a prayerful person. Ensure that God is the first person you talk to every morning. Praise God. Amen. You need to pray every morning when you wake up. You need to pray every morning. Pray every morning. Praise God. There is no formula in praying. Can I say that one again? There is no formula in doing what? Whether you shout, whether you talk, whether you do what? Prayer is the communication between man and God. Make sure you pray. Somebody say, I will pray. Because if you don't pray, you are playing. When you don't pray, if you don't pray, you are playing. And when you play, the devil will play with you. Somebody, you stand with God. At the place of your prayer. Your prayer affects your standing life. Never play with your prayer life. Number six. Go the extra mile. Amen. You have to go the extra mile. Praise God. And that is why if you do more than you are hired to do. You will eventually be paid more than you are expected to be paid. So go extra mile. Don't be a person that needs to be pushed. And this one I'm sharing to you, my sons and daughter. Don't be a kind of a person you have to be told to do what to do. For example, if there is a broom here, you see this is a broom, and the broom is at the... You don't need somebody to tell you. Remove the broom and not just a broom. Remove the broom and any other thing that is at the door. That is how people go extra miles. A person that works in a company. Let me tell you the secret of promotion. A person that works in a company. Let's say the boss has said today we are going to arrange 
Seven crates of soda. Praise God. Amen. You are how many people? Five people. Each one of you must arrange the seven crates of what? Of soda. Unainua crate unaweka. Unainua crate unaweka. But the rest they will do seven. But you, you do ten. Today you have done it ten. Another day you do it ten. Another day. And when the boss comes to count, he counts one, two, three, four, Omodi, seven. Oduol, seven. Ochilo, seven. But when it comes to you, you always do twelve or ten. What will stop that boss from promoting you? Praise God. Because sometimes our extra mind has got a way. It opens up doors. When I was growing up with your uncle, Okumu, you know him. Your uncle used to be lazy. He just sits in the house. He does not do anything. But me, I'll go out, I'll fetch firewood. You know, you have never seen firewood. You have never seen cow or anything. So me, I go out, I fetch firewood. I go to the well, I bring water. I make sure everything is ready. Then when it is evening, I go to the kitchen. I cook. I know how to cook. That is why I cook. I cook ugali. I cook mboga. That's why I like cooking. And I cook. And when my mother will, our mother will come back in the evening, she will find that everything has been done. She keeps it in her heart. Praise God. So tomorrow when she will come back from the market, the first person to give something, whether it be a mandazi, whether it be a dress, whether it be a shirt, it is me. Then my brother will start complaining. Praise God. You give my brother and you do not give me. But what he did not understand is this. It is my extra mile that is rewarding me. When you go extra mile, there is a way that God will always reward you. You cannot go extra mile and God will fail to reward you. Even if people may not reward you, but the extra mile you have done in anything in your life, God has got a way that he will reward you. Praise God. And that is why Jesus said that when they tell you, let us go one feet, take them ten more feet. Jesus encouraged this and he said, you have to go extra mile. Somebody say amen. amen. To get to the top of your dream, you must be ready to go to the extra mile. Extra height is a product of extra mile. Ordinary things produce ordinary results, but extra things produce extraordinary results results somebody say amen. amen let me give you the principles of extra miles 541 jesus said that if they want you to go with them one kilometer take them far so if you do more you will get more pharaoh brought joseph to interpret his dream but when joseph came to pharaoh he did not just interpret the dream Praise God. Amen. That one you read it in Genesis chapter number 41, 15 to 25. Joseph went extra mile by giving Pharaoh a solution. He said, now after this dream, you need to prepare a place so that these seven years of hunger, there must be food that has been kept. Joseph went ahead of interpretation to offer the solution. Joseph was literally describing himself and when he said that, he offered a solution. Let me tell you, when you help people, don't just give them what they have asked you. Praise God. Amen. That's why people who go extra mile, they will ask you, is there something else that you want? Hello? Amen. Is there something else that you may? You may want. I've gone to places, not in my preaching engagements, not every place has handled me the same way. There are places you go, you find people, they will do everything below average. They will mistreat you. They will behave as if you do not exist. But also God will make other avenues whereby you go to places where you find the extra mile people. Praise God. For example, I went to a particular family in Zimbabwe. They went, they picked me up from the airport. They took me into their house. Their house is like a palace. They were treating me like a king. 
My bedroom had six by six bed, seats, everything, plasma screen, remote, food, fridge, everything that I need is there. But still the man will come every morning at the door and say, man of God, is there anything that you need? I have more than what I need, but it's still coming to us. And even sometimes he will come in the morning with an ice cream. Praise God. I'm not a fan of ice cream, but he will come with his and come with mine. He give it unto me. They make sure that what they eat, I eat more. What I drink, what they drink, I drink more. Where I go, I, where they go, I go more. Somebody say amen. amen. They treated me. That's why when you do things with extra mind, God has got a way he rewards you. Somebody say amen. amen. David was sent with his father to take food. But when he read at the battle line, he said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? So I want to close with this one. Connect to the Father's blessing. This one is very important. A blessing that changes a son or a daughter, it comes from a father. In all the scriptures that I've read, fathers bless their sons. Fathers bless their children. That is why... The blessing in your life is as strong as the blessing over your life. Your prophetic coverage determines your destiny coverage. And that is why to go further in your life, you need a father. This is a spiritual father and a biological father. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father so that it may go well with you on earth. Your father is your feathers. It says in it says in, in, in Genesis chapter 6, verse number 3, that honor your father and mother so that it may go well on you on earth. Praise the Lord. You don't despise your parents, no matter how weak they might be, no matter how they might be problematic, no matter how they might be, they have issues. Their issues should never be part of you. Respect and honor them. The Bible says when you do that, it will go well with you. Somebody say amen. amen. And that's why your father is your feathers. Assisting you to fly into your future. Isaac blessed Esau. He blessed also Jacob. Do this so that you can be able to prosper. Praise God. So how do you connect with your father's blessing? You saw. You can do is to connect to the blessing of your father or mentor is to sow into their life. Sow into that anointing. That's why Isaac asked for Esau to go out and hunt something so that he might bless him. You have to sow. And the grace that you sow into, that grace multiplies you. Praise the Lord. So today as I am closing, today we, are, we were speaking about connecting to your dream or the dreamers and how to go to the top with your dream. I said number one is what? Paul, number one. You see the problem of not writing notes. Next time get a book, get a notebook, write. Number one, we said you must be the best. Somebody say, I'm the best. Say again, I'm the best. Number two, you must understand the times. Number three, develop yourself. Any area that you build yourself, you become strong. Nobody can beat you in what you have developed yourself into. Praise God. Number three, refuse to be distracted. Know what you want in life. Focus on that because what you focus on, that is what defines your destiny. Praise God. Amen. All of you are still in school. You need to know that if you don't focus on education today, tomorrow maybe, you see, it is just by God's grace I'm a pastor. So if there was no calling, what, where will I have been today? Because the, 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 the academic qualifications I have, I cannot work in a company. I cannot work for an Indian man. I cannot work in a government. I cannot work anywhere. Praise the Lord. But for you, you still have the opportunity. 
And the secret behind to implement this opportunity is in what we learned in number four, whereby you must be able to maintain, to use the time very well. The time and the season that you are in is to focus in your education. Then number four, we said you have maintained to prayer. Number five, you have to go extra mile. Then number seven, we said you have to connect to your father's blessing. Let's rise up and pray. Let's give Jesus a clap of our inner sister. Let's just sing that song and we're gonna pray. Let's join them.
just let him want be a sante. Father, we bring our sacrifice unto you. We thank you for this service. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for giving us direction. We thank you for giving us strategies. We thank you, Lord. We give you the glory unto you. We bring our sacrifice. We submit ourselves to your presence. We say thank you. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. Receive all the preeminence. We give you the sacrifice.